Hi guys and welcome to week four of eSchool. You guys will remember that last week we talked about cardiovascular endurance. Cardiovascular endurance is how well our heart can pump blood, oxygen, nutrients to the muscles. For example, in our legs if we're running. So pumping that oxygen, getting that oxygen to our muscles, that's how we improve cardiovascular endurance. But that overlaps a little bit with something called muscular endurance. So while our heart is important in being able to pump blood and get oxygen into our body relates to the cardiovascular system, we also need our muscles to be able to perform for a long time to complete a long activity. So cardiovascular endurance relates to the heart and the lungs, and it's the ability to deliver oxygen to our muscles. But if I were running, it's not just my heart rate that increases, my muscles are also working really hard. My calves, my quads, my glutes, all of those need to be able to work for a long period of time as well. That's muscular endurance. So muscular endurance involves how many times can a muscle contract before it gets tired and wears out. I'm gonna share a personal story. Uh, some of you guys remember about a year and a half ago, I ran a marathon. It was the first time I'd ever done that. And I will tell you, in the last five miles of that marathon, my heart was doing fine. It was pumping blood to my legs, but my legs could not go any faster. Every step hurt. And that's because my muscular endurance was not as good as it should have been to be able to carry me for that 26 miles. These two things, muscular endurance and cardiovascular endurance, are even different um, compared to something we'll cover next week called muscular strength. But to prepare you for that, check out the table below in our Google Doc that's gonna give you some more information on the difference between muscular endurance and muscular strength. I hope this helps. I want you thinking about muscular endurance while we do our Tabata workout this week. Bye guys.